Doodle bud. I gotta tell you, I haven't historically been overly impressed with Jinhao pens. Most of them for me have been sort of so-so. I've had maybe two sort of okay ones and a bunch of ones that have not been so great. They've even fallen apart on me relatively quick. So I was hesitant to pick up this pen, but I picked it up uh, just the other day. It arrived immediately. I was impressed. And then I inked it. I was even further impressed. I don't know. Could this be the best sub $10 starter pen? I don't know. I think it could be. Let me tell you why. Now, for some people, the Jinhao X159, they'll say things like this is the best pen ever made or the game changer pen or, or whatever it is. To me, it's okay. It's so-so. It has a really cool number eight size nib, which is really nice. And for the price, you can't beat it. And it writes quite well. But as far as build quality for the rest of the pen, I mean, this mine actually came apart pretty damn quick. Like it just fell apart and things came out. So uh, I've had nothing but kind of problems with mine. It could be fixed with some glue, but that's, again, that shouldn't be happening. But anyways, I think it's okay. And, and maybe unpopular opinion, if it didn't look like a Mont Blanc 149, I don't think it would get that much attention. There we go. Leave a, something in the comments. Freak out about that if you want, but I'm just going to say that. So up until this pen, the pen I recommended the most as, uh, for me, at least a good Jinhao pen, kind of under that $10 range has been the Jinhao 51A. And even just in general, Jinhao or, or other brands, I felt really good about this pen. Yes, it's a, you know, sort of a knockoff kind of of a Parker 51. You're not going to get the two confused, but it does look a lot like it. But overall, I'm actually sort of impressed with it. It's not perfect. There's a few little things. I mean, this gets scratched up quite a bit, all that kind of stuff. But it does perform and works quite well. So this has been the one I've kind of recommended to people who just want to get into fountain pens um, or looking for a nice one, something like that. But, you know, good bang for the buck. This thing arrived, came in this little box business gift pen this is like perfect for that kind of stuff you know someone's first fountain pen or, or recommendation or something like that jinhao 82 this obviously looks like a sailor pen i don't know if it's the sailor promenade or some other little smaller pro gear ones i actually don't own any sailor pens but i, I know the you know what the sailor pens looks like and there is a sailor pen out there somewhere that this is dimensionally like bang on with so whatever here's my thoughts when it comes to pens that copy other pens no matter who makes it i just feel like if you're going to copy another pen do your best job i understand it's going to be significantly cheaper so there's concessions you have to make but if you're smart and clever and, and pay attention to detail you can make a pretty damn good pen uh, for a fairly low price and i i am thoroughly impressed with this pen this is the best sub ten dollar pen I have yet to come across. I think like just the fit and finish on this thing is absolutely fantastic. There's lots of nib options. This one has an extra fine because I want to see what their extra fine was like on this pen. It kind of suits it because it's a smaller pen. Like I'll give a size comparison, all that kind of stuff. But um, wow, like this writes wonderfully. It's this probably one of the smoothest extra fine nibs I've ever used. It's really, really good. It's tuned just perfect. The construction is bang on. I actually have no issues. There's there's really nothing on here where I would say, oh, they should have done this. And I am a super nitpicky guy. And this has uh, satisfied all my nitpickery that I could possibly come up with with this pen. So let me roll through it, show you all the little details I found. And yeah, I'll write with it, all that stuff. I am thoroughly impressed. Let me show you some more. There's one area that drives me nuts, a bit of an oversight down here in the cap. Oh, the focus won't whoop, do it for us. But uh, there's a screw down there and you can see it's all rusty because it's not stainless steel. So that's something that kind of drives me nuts. Either upgrade to a stainless steel screw or put a little fitting in there. You can get a little disc or a little liner, something like that to cover it because even that little plastic part is probably cheaper than the increased cost to get a stainless steel screw, but that's fine. So just do it, right? And on the scale you would make this, it would be a few cents, but they didn't and it rusts out. That's kind of annoying. Well, let's take a look at the 82 here. So you can see down in there, they have their screw. Um, and actually it's brass anyway, so that really won't rust, but it could interact with the ink a little bit. But two in one combo, they have that liner down in there one to protect that screw so even if it would corrode or something this liner is going to protect it but then the uh, liner in there helps to seal the pen 
So it's a two in one. You can see here, that's the bottom of the liner. Well, that's exactly, you can see, if we can sort of see through the resin there, that's exactly where the end of the section hits. So it gives a nice little compression. It has just a tad of give to it. Like I'm just touching it there, but you go a little further with the rotation. To, whoops, sorry about that. To get things nice and secure. So one, the cap's going to stay on there, and two, it's sealing, and three, as a bonus, it's going to prevent any rusting up in there. Fantastic. The threads are done quite well. They're very, very smooth, but here's the thing. To get it so it doesn't wiggle at all, it takes a lot of extra effort and cost to do that. So that's fine. You know, you, you, it's okay for it to have a little wiggle when you're unscrewing. Oh my gosh, focus. Here we go. It's okay to have a little wiggle like that, but you don't want that if you you know, tighten up the pen, you don't want it to wiggle there. Well, because they paid attention to those distances and it seals up, applies a little pressure on there, uh, now it's not only sealed and secure, there's no wiggle on there. So nice, nice attention to detail. Look at all these little bands that are on here. They are on here, just perfect. There's no misalignment, there's no ridges, no steps. Same thing here on the back on that little band. Like the fitment on all this is fantastic. The material here has the nice little sparkles. They got all sorts of colors on there. I've seen this pen for a while I, and I, I looked at it just from the pictures. I haven't actually watched any reviews on this pen at all, but just from the pictures, I thought it actually looks like it's pretty well made. Um, but none of them really did it for me than the sparkly blue. And I thought, whatever, $7, even if I hate it, it's worth it. And I absolutely, I love it. <laughs> it's really good. Let's open this puppy up. Um, yeah, like something like this here. So you got your, your standard Jinhao converter. So you can take other inks or you can also buy for cartridges. You buy the Jinhao ones. You're going to get a huge bag of them. I don't know, for like $10 or something. You can get a huge, ridiculous quantity. So if you're a student or something and, and bringing around a bottle of ink is, isn't convenient, you can just do a bunch of the cartridges. I like to use the converters because then I'm not throwing stuff in the garbage. But anyways, you got this nice neck up here. So that keeps it solid. So we're not having a wiggling converter that's in there. It's not going to rattle in the pen body, wherever that went. Yeah, so when you snug things down, if you tap it, it's not going to rattle in the body. That's a really nice attention to detail. These threads are good. They're not sharp at all. And then we have the little O-ring down here to just give a, a nice feel when you tighten it, but also what that's going to do is stop it from loosening. And so again, there, you know, the O-ring has its own groove down in there. It's not going to get mashed up with the threads. And here at the end of the body, you can see we left a little real estate, maybe, I don't know what that is, two millimeters, one and a half millimeters, where there's no threads. So that nice flat section, and they put it the the proper little angle there at the edge. It just it goes on there and goes on to that O-ring just nicely, seals it, proper compression. Like the fitment on that is absolutely spot on. Like, I don't know. <laughs> that excites me. I, <laughs> I've had to, you know, design things and work with things where they have to be sealed right. You can't over compress the O-ring. You can't under, we'd pressure test stuff. And I appreciate the detail that goes into a proper fitment on an o-ring and they absolutely nailed it and these threads are gorgeous like you might think plastic threads metal if it's going to self-destruct no 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 no. you can do that all day long if you have a good thread profile on both and you do something smart like that and you have a thread stop on top of it so i can't over tighten this i mean i can really reef on it and then probably shatter it if i want to but then if you do that you're just you know you're not paying attention you know when it's done it's nice it's snug you're not going to over tighten it and uh, it's just perfect. It posts. Thank you very much for that. You got to give it a little bit of a, if you go super light, it's kind of wiggly and stuff like that. But you just give it a little, um, it's in there. And now it's a decent length pen for my hand size. I got a pretty big hand. It fits wonderfully. The, di the uh, diameter, the step down, it's not there at all. Like the threads are smooth. It's mega comfortable for a small pen. This feels great in my hand and I usually don't like small pens. So let's, uh, yeah. This thing's great. Let me show you some other small pens, dimensions, weight, writing sample, and uh, I'll close it up. But I think you can already get a sense of how I feel about this pen. I am thoroughly impressed. I I'm blown away by this pen. I can't believe it. Okay, here is the pen lineup for a size comparison. Starting on a little bit of the longer side, we have the Good Blue L130. Well, that's 130 millimeters. That's what that means. We have a Faber Castell Hexo Pilot Kakuno Jinhao 82. Uh, this is the Pilot Prera, very close in size. The uh, 82 is just a smidgen longer Caveco Sport. 
This is the Shibu North. Uh, oh, what's it called again? I forget something. Fox. Oh, I just reviewed it. Anyways, there will be a link in the description. Did my engraving. And then one of my favorite pocket pens, the Gravitas pocket pen. I said I would give dimensions. I'll give it in the description because I can't find my calipers. I don't know where they are. They're somewhere. I'll find them, but just not in time for the video. Weighs 20 grams though, so that's a nice light little pen. I like the weight. Jin Hao pen. Let's use some Jin Hao ink. This is the Jin Hao blue. I reviewed this uh, separately if you want to see some more on that. I'll do a writing sample on Rhodia and then of course my favorite regalia. I'd love to hear from you down in the comments what you think your very best starter pen is. I've tried quite a few. There's many that are pretty good, but this one, just top of the heap all the way. Very surprised. So good job, Jin Hao, on the uh, Model 82 you got here. Thought I'd give you a quick update as well. I need your help a little bit. So Yust from uh, Apple Boom reached out to me. We connected. He wants to send me a pen. And he said, just browse around, see if there's something that catches your eye. There's just so much stuff on their site. And so I'd love to maybe hear from the viewers, you guys there. Um, is there something that you're interested in? Maybe the most popular one I'll, I'll order. I've looked at some Magna Carta pens, some of the Mayora pens. They look beautiful. I've really been into Italian pens lately. So if there's something on there, of course, within reason, there's probably $20,000 pens on his site. I won't be getting one of those. But if there's something on there, maybe leave a comment of a pen you'd like to see me review, get my input on, my opinion on. I'd, uh, I'd be open to it, and I'll chat with Eust on that. So anyways... We'll wrap up this writing sample and another shout out to the regalia paper <laughs> i i love this stuff it's so smooth and it just does wonders to the ink i'm not a good drawer but i figured for fine detail work <laughs> this pen works quite well also base date blue stay tuned another about a week or so and i'll do some cleaning let's see if i can flush that twisby out but uh let's wrap things up here i have no problem giving credit when credit is due and I really think credit is due with what Jin Hao has done with this Model 82 pen. For most of the times when people ask what's a good first pen to get, I'd say something like this. If they want to get something, you know, below that $10 range, this was something where it's, you know, the next step up. I think these are fantastic, quite affordable. I got reviews on all these and a little bit more. The Pilot uh, Prera, it has a glorious snap cap on there. It is just so perfect. Very well made pen. Um, yeah, so it just depends on your price point, but now I would say for that below $10 range, um, this, I don't know, this to me is untouchable. There is this other zebra pen. I think I picked this up for $3 at Staples. I did a separate video again. I was blown away by just all the tiny little design details and considerations. And I think this is a great, you know, first starter pen. It comes with ink, all that sort of stuff, or if you want a disposable one or just for straight travel, something like that. But it's not that amazing in like the writing department. It doesn't offer anything aesthetically. That's really, you know, kind of cool. But for this price, again, depends where you buy it, what your exchange rate is, what the shipping cost was. Anyways, for me, it was uh, like $7 Canadian free shipping. Maybe there's a place you can get it for six or five, whatever. <laughs> it's under $10. And this, I'm blown away by this. The clip is made extremely well. The plating on here is just, they did a fantastic job. All the detail work here on the band, just really, really good. They're honestly, uh, I, I have no improvements that I would suggest on this pen. I think it's absolutely perfect. And for this price point, you got all the different nib options. So this is extra fine. There's a fine, I think a medium or something. There's even the bent nib. Um, I might even order one of those just to try it out. So, wow, for this price, sub 10 bucks, uh, tell me in the comments who you think does it better, but this is a phenomenal little pen. That's it. I'm done. I just had to do this video. It's 1.12 in the morning. Get some sleep, doodle bud. We'll catch you next time.